let's talk a little bit about health scores. So how many of you already have a health score implemented for your CSM team? How many of you still do it in Excel versus in a system or manually updating it? Partially manual, like not completely fully automated? Okay. For those of you still sort of like left their hands for the automated piece, how many of you found the health score to be completely reliable? Okay, so obviously there's some always some a little bit challenges with the health score, right? So you had yours somewhat manually updated. Would you like to share a little bit, how does your health score structure, what is manual, what is automated? 100%. Can you talk a little bit about the health score? Our health score, um, is, we put it on a, a test for a trial management practice that we put in place last year and ran this beta for about six months. So we tried it out to develop you know, what it is we could do to, to understand the likelihood that a prospect would actually convert to a full-time customer. So what we used is a couple of factors that we tied into it. One was how responsive they were to our emails that we would send out. So we leveraged Pardot to, Pardo, Pardot, um, to track it to see if they were actually opening any of our teases. Um, and then there was also response rates of just like direct emails or calls that we would make. That was, that was one factor. And then the next factor was just how engaged they were with our product. And we just did something as simple as uh, are they actually logging in? How often are they logging in per week? And then we're, so I work for the Associated Press, so we sell content. So photos, text, video content. And we identified a factor of how much content there are they actually pulling down um, every day and which users are pulling that down and mm -hmm. what are the gaps then with that. And then based on that, we said, yeah, that's about this score. And then put that down. So, so I'm just gonna make a guess yeah. that you have thousands of customers. Thousands of customers, not in the trial program, uh, but thousands mm -hmm. of like, yeah, thousands. The reason I keep looking at him is because he also has thousands of customers. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody that has thousands of customers and maybe the ARR is relatively low, whatever that means to you, maybe they're self-onboarding, they, they register automatically to your programs or could, uh, typically what you would see is, is something like that. So how is it manual with thousands of customers? Uh, so luckily we don't have, we haven't gotten that far. So okay. right now it's just manually with, we had about 100 um, customers that went through the trial. So, gotcha. and the manual was me Going through, going through the list. So ideally, you actually sort of like piloting it yes. manually yep. with the hope that once you validate that approach, yep. you will convert it to completely automated yep. version. And we got, so honestly, we got to a point where we could predict um, whether or not the, the contract was going to convert or not. And we mm -hmm. could predict within, so we were running 30, 80%. About 30 day trials. So yeah, about 80%. That's good. Um, we were able to, you know, even like within the first week, mm -hmm. we often would know whether or not someone was actually going to convert with us. And then by the second week, we were pretty, like, pretty, pretty sure. Pretty sure. You feel like it's 90% yeah. level. And then, you know, the, the rest of the two weeks, we were just kind of mm -hmm. the final part of the 30 days, we were just going to roll it out. But Got we it. Would kind of know that they were there was always, you know, the, there was a couple that came out of left field that, that, uh, oh, sorry, there were a couple that came out of left field after the scores were pretty low. They were mm -hmm. basically said they're uh, highly unlikely to convert. Um, and they suddenly, like, in the last couple of days, it was like, no, let's sign the contract, we're done. And they didn't do any logging in, no activity, mm -hmm. no nothing. <laughs> and it was just like, well, why did you just put me through all this <laughs> work here? Why don't we just mm -hmm. skip to that place? So. Awesome. So this is one type of a health score that's actually designated to help increase conversion rates. So in the high touch world, this would be a health score that's just looking at the onboarding phase. Are they fully onboarded by the end of the onboard stage? Who else has a who else has a health score? that either works or doesn't work, but has, what maybe wants to share a little bit about the process of coming up with one. Hi, my name is Joe, I work with Cisco. And as you can imagine, Cisco has thousands and thousands of customers for thousands of products. And um, 
So I work in the security business group and we're starting to roll out health scores for some of our security products. Um, so the way we define health score is we look at the product uh, and the telemetry that we currently get from the product. So we have like this endpoints uh, solution that uh, provides a lot of telemetry. And so we know how many licenses the customers purchased, how many licenses they've actually deployed onto their endpoints, which sticky features they're using, how often they're using it. Yeah. Are they successful for the reasons they bought the product? Um, we have subjective elements to our health score as well, but I don't think they're that well defined yet. We also are implementing Net Promoter Score as a way to kind of understand our customers. Customers that are getting to their outcomes are probably more likely to recommend, but I'm not convinced that that's entirely scientific yet. Um, and then products that don't have telemetry, we don't have um, a health score. But one interesting thing we do is we have this health score contour. Mm -hmm. So when a health score moves from a two to a three, that's not necessarily a one increment movement. Mm -hmm. Because in our contour, a two means something, a three means something completely different. A five means something completely different, right? And I think that's a good way to look at it. That's one of the things that I would consider kind of a best practice that uh, the team that defines the health scores uh, utilizes. Do you mind if I double click on that a little bit? Just sure. so if, I think I have some questions, probably others have some questions. Um, what, how do you interpret the customer health score with the way it is designed now? Uh, what is the answer that the health score is, is really designed to answer? Is the it customers whether, using the product. Or not. Or not. It's not whether or not they're going to renew. No, because again, you know, the, the renewal to me is a function of did they get to their desired outcomes? Right. And are they having a good experience with the product? The health score, just because they've, they're utilizing eight features, doesn't mean they're doing so with ease. They could be utilizing those eight features and it's a pain in the butt and it's right. costing them a lot of time and money. That's not an indicator that they're gonna renew. So how useful is the health score for a CSM? And if it's not very useful mm -hmm. for a CSM, who is it useful within the organization? I think it's useful for a CSM because we want to, the customer's never going to get value out of a product unless they're using it. Mm -hmm. So you have to know they're using it. If they bought an endpoint solution, they bought 10,000 endpoint licenses, they've only deployed 500 endpoint licenses, that's a good thing to know. Especially right. if six months, eight months have gone by since they took delivery. Um, those are good things to know. So that's important. And, and based on health score, certain CTAs get triggered. Mm -hmm. We use Gainsight, so right. certain CTAs and Gainsight CTAs get triggered. CTAs are called to action. Call to action. Yeah. Don't have Gainsight, yeah. yeah. It's like a playbook being triggered. Is the score reliable? When the telemetry is good mm -hmm. and you're using, using it for the purpose it was intended that it was for. intended for, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Um, right now, like one of the projects I'm working on now is uh, figuring out how we can effectively capture, monitor, and track a customer's desired outcomes and the KPIs they want to use to determine whether they achieve that outcome mm -hmm. or not. Um, because I think that's going to be more indicative of is the customer being successful. And the closer we get them to their desired outcomes and the if we can quantifiably measure those KPIs, mm -hmm. and sometimes, I mean, what I'd like to see is that we tell the customer things they don't know they don't know, mm -hmm. right? That's how you add value. That's how Absolutely. you become more of a trusted business partner than just a technology vendor. And how many metrics do you have compiled into that overall health score? That's in the work in process right now. How many do you have now? Four, I, six? No, I'd say there's maybe less than 10. A customer goes through a product journey, mm -hmm. you know, they, they onboard it, they configure it, they test it, they probably deploy a little bit in production mm -hmm. and then gradually they, and then they migrate off their legacy. So all those kinds of things are milestones in their product journey. So we want to have metrics around each of those milestones. Got it. So you actually segregated, yeah. calculated based on the stage. Does anybody else have a health score that's 
specifically targeted for specific stages to consider that? We do divide it in two stages. We have both an onboarding stage mm -hmm. and then a, hey, it's been three months and you're onboarded, now what kind of stage? Mm -hmm. And so for our onboarding mm -hmm. stage, we actually just have a few like, um, what we call like early success indicators or kind of warning lights that if these things are not met during the first kind of at different stages, that's probably a reason to go escalate to our VPs or to kind of our CEO and say, hey, you need to go and get engaged before this is totally off the rails six months down the road. Uh, once the customer is onboarded though, we try to keep it pretty simple. Uh, we do have some product metrics that go into our health score. We have a relationship value as well. And so we just literally average the two down the middle and say, it's not perfect, but here's at least a sanity check for you to say this customer is probably pretty good or they're probably pretty bad. We need to kind of look into it. Look into it. So we do not use them for kind of predict renewals, but we do use them to kind of just sanity check are things going where they should be, and do we need to obviously escalate to someone or do something, um, get some professional services involved, or that kind of stuff. So. So it sounds like the, the customer health score is designed to just raise a flag so you can double click to see if there's an issue and escalation is needed. That's right. And that's why it's, it should probably be mostly true. Yes. Because it just says, hey, this client needs some attention. Go check to see if there's really an issue or maybe there isn't. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's flagging so, so that they can see be proactive. Like forecast, be kind of like, hey, I'm 95% sure they're going to be new, but the account health is terrible, you know, are we going to, hey, are we sure this is actually the going the way that you think it's going? Anybody has a unique thing in their customer health score that potentially is unique for their company that they'd like to share? Hi, so my name is Andreas, and um, something unique is not so much related to the company, but what else we're doing with the health score, which is um, not just looking at when someone is bottoming out, so that you have to engage with a rescue plan or mm -hmm. some other call to action, but also actually looking at all the positive outliers. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing that makes them these positive outliers mm -hmm. so that everyone can learn from them and there is this feedback loop um, back to the uh, deployment phase to make new customers and existing customers more productive, aka su <clears throat> successful in the, uh, in the product. So it's not just the negative outlook, but also finding all those super champions that you have already in the customer base. Awesome. So what kind of data points are you looking at or source systems did you incorporate into that health score? Um, there, are, there are a couple of them. So um, the solution itself has some um, calling home features where, where we can see the uh, utilization of um, licenses and can compare this um, against the uh, number of licenses that were purchased. Similar it to also, what Cisco yes, is doing. Um, luckily for that solution, engagement means that you gain the value, the productivity that you were looking for, that you're not just kind of spinning your wheels. So we can uh, tie some correlation there. But also into the health score goes, which is one of the manual things, because unfortunately it's not yet automated from the uh, support system, uh, the number of tickets, if tickets are starting to age out so that a customer is stuck there. And then also during the uh, onboarding phase where it's really more qualitative, but not um, taking all customers assumingly for the same journey. You have six weeks and then you're onboarded if you like it or not. Promotion through various co communities, not just one catch-all co community to help them to get early successes and then really ramp up into a productive state and go, go on from there. So it's a, it's a bunch of things throughout the uh, customer journey at specific uh, points that that are looked at and is all put together. Right. And as always, the weighting of the different factors and so is um, dark magic more than science. <laughs> cool. Did anybody use predictive analytics to come up with a health score measure? I'm Donna Weber. So we had a predictive analytics uh, vendor and um, they were acquired by Cisco, so I can't uh, uh, work with them directly anymore, but uh, we uh, worked with them to create an algorithm uh, through Salesforce and um, and weighted, um, you know, really did analysis of all the different touch points. So, you know, did they take training? How often? Uh, what else have they bought? Uh, what about consulting? How many support tickets have they logged? 
And it was just really fascinating to see what rose to the surface. And at the time, I was the head of customer education, and the data showed that well-trained customers were 20% were more likely to renew and had a 15% higher net promoter score. And then um, it, it also brought in data um, from the head web crawlers so that it wasn't just what we thought, our relationship, but let's say they were doing great with us, but they were about to be acquired or financially not doing well. It brought that data in to to uh, give it a health score. So it was really, it was really uh, accurate and valuable. Well, we have Boaz Mayor here. Boaz, do you use a health score at your company or previous companies? A couple of points on, on health score, my perspective. I'm, um, I'm at a company that is fairly unique. We sell to governments. Um, so our metrics and our usage patterns are not uh, as clear, clearly defined in, in metrics that we can report on to address health score. We have deployed a solution, um, Comicos, to assess the communications between us and customers. And we have predictive analytics that tell us based on level of conversations, emails, meetings, etc., what's the likelihood that there is more need for communication between us and customers. We plan to add to that other metrics from support and, and et cetera, but that has been quite useful. We're early on that trajectory uh, with that solution, but it seems to be very good. Uh, the other thing that we are doing, that I think is fairly unique um, when I talk to other people in the industry, is one of the most important metrics we found to success of a customer is what I call program expansion, which is not necessarily what the adoption statistics are, the MAUs and the usage, but rather what actions we take with the customer to drive their program expansion. So we are adding reports, we are expanding to a new um, uh, division, we are adding a set of features that we launch, can the customer use it? And when we track which are the customers who are growing their program, how they use us, that's the best predictor we have found, and I've seen, I've seen this in at least two companies in the past where this is the best predictor. It's kind of how the do you track that? Because that, like uh, Joe from Cisco said before, that's really tracking the business outcome. So how do you? So it's not so. Or maybe not. It's not necessarily the business business outcome, but it's the bucket of drivers that drive the business outcome. So the outcome is, you know, whether the customer is using your solution and gaining value from it. I. I don't know how to measure that today. What I do know is if the customer is using us for more reports, if there are more departments using us, right, we used to have one department, now there are three, there's growth in their program, that growth indicates a trajectory which is likely to drive business outcome. And I'm, the, the actionable piece there is that I'm driving my team, the CSMs, to go after those elements, and we have very specific ones, certain features, certain reports, certain capabilities. Uh, broadening in throughout the organization, things like that. Got it. Thank you, Boaz. Thank, Thank you very much. So what's the best practices for volume of health score inputs? That means how many metrics feed the overall health score, right? And some one of you said 10? Who said 10? Approximately 10? So, 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 right, I'll, I'll do a poll, a poll in a second. And some he says he heard as many as 40 to 45 used. I've never seen that, OK? Um, and everything in between. Thoughts on a proximity uh, sweet spot. But how many have less than five metrics feeding into the overall health score calculation? Or less, five or less, one. How many has 10 to five? Five to 10 metrics feeding into the overall health score? The majority, I would say. Okay, how many have more than 10? 10 to 20? More than 10? How many? We have 20 today. Anybody beats 20? Okay, I, I just like wonder how the algorithm feeds into the overall score. Come why, on. Why wouldn't you have more? Well, I, I'm sort of wondering, is more better? What, why is more better? Why is less better? My point was just because I've struggled with this. I used, to, yes. I used to be a researcher, and so, um, and I've worked with some predictive models. It's really hard to do the math on more than five, five factors, right? Because there's a lot of interactions, right? So it's not only, you know, I've got a 10, a 10, a 10, and a 1 on something. So because I've got a 1, oh boy, we're in problems. Do something. Because a lot of times what it is is if you have a 5 on something and an 8 on something else, that's a really big problem. And maybe a 2 on one factor doesn't really matter if everything else is a 10. It's just, it becomes mathematically really complex. But the other thing I will note, like in this whole discussion, 
like you have to tell your people to do something, right? I mean, you have to give them some indicator. So as much as these scores aren't perfect, they do help people prioritize their time. And like, that's the game we play, right? And limited resources and unlimited <laughs> opportunity. Anyway. True. Hey, actually, well, tell us about your 20 and why do you think that's a better approach? Sure. Or, so, or just your approach? So my, 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 I've been accused multiple times in the past for having too many metrics uh, for my people, for my customers, for whatever. Uh -huh. The way I look at that is the world is complex, right? That's just reality. So if I put a mirror against it, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just saying to you, the world is complex. So the way I look at it, as long as the impact in terms of the time it takes your people to, cut, to gather the information is called curtailed, you should do as many as you can. Now, I understand the mathematical problem there, but most of us, I don't use a very, I mean, unless the, uh, outside the Comico piece, which does a, a mathematical um, assessment on our communications, all the other stuff is not mathematical, but it gives me great indicators, right? Red, yellow, green throughout a, measure, a, a very large set of metrics that give me the right indication on the relationship side, on the usage side, on the technology side, on the support side, and because most of these I'm able to pick either from the tool itself or from Salesforce. The amount of manual input is fairly minimal, and as far as I'm concerned, if the manual imp, uh, requirement is minimal, I'd like as many data points as I can. Okay, so do you then take all 20 and assign them weighted averages so that you can calculate an overall health score? Not yet. Got it, so that's why it works. And the reason, and the reason I don't do that is because <laughs> it's, it's right? extremely complex to put in a formula, and what I found is that um, There's 20. What, what, what I find is it's easier to view, right, look throughout the page and say, okay, do I have too many reds? That's the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to put it into a formula. Yep. I haven't found it. That, that, right. That way it yet. would be probably impossible with, with 20. But it's a very interesting, no, because if you do want to have 20, I think the only way you could do this is to say, oh, well, when I squint my eyes, is it mostly red, mostly right? Or are there reds in certain columns that I know are indicators? Right. But this is where I don't have the formula, I just know. And I only have 850 and And maybe customers. that's really the approach, because what are we trying to do with this overall health score? What is the purpose? Drive action, right? Yeah, drive, drive action. action. Mm -hmm. drive but it wouldn't be, wouldn't you drive more specific action if you had 20? Um, wouldn't a, a one a formula for all 20 metrics assume that all your customers are the same? Whereas what Boris right. was talking about, if I saw 20 uh, indicators, I could say, well, red for this customer doesn't really mean anything, right. but red for that customer does. So the human is the does the math, you know, intuitively Better. or case by case. Because they'll consider the stage. They'll consider a bunch of other things. And it also depends on the level of touch, right? How ta high touch, exactly. low touch, right? Yes. Say that you uh, share the health score cross-functional. Does anybody uh, share? The question CS is... Does, or do you share with the customer as well outside? Right, so th let's ask this. Does anybody share their customer health score with other teams within the organization? Uh, which team? Everybody on Salesforce. Everybody on Salesforce. Any specific teams that you know are looking at it? The sales team. The sales team, because they do the upsells and the cross sales. Product managers. Product managers. Training. They're looking at it, like yeah. you can see them like all the time. Okay. Well, they're looking, they're not looking at individual scores, but, but overall, at aggregate, aggregate, because it's based on usage segment, and features different, different and stickiness, okay, so because the way that your health score is actually. Yeah. Designed is very much feature based and usage based, so I could see why they'd be very gung ho about that. Anybody else knows that there's another team that always looks at the customer health score? Talk about sales, product team, training, training, yeah. supporting your organization? Yes. Yeah. Executive team. The executive team, that's right. They're very, very interested, about, right? And our renewals yeah. team. And the renewals team, which is a fail. Finance team. The other question is how many of you actually share the health score with your customers? How many of you have a strong feeling in your stomach when I ask that question? Like they jerk back, like no way in hell would I share the health score with my customer. No knee jerk reaction? How many of you would share the health score not, with your not customer? The same, right? Huh? Not the exact same health indicator. Not the exact same. <laughs>
You know, when someone says that to me, that means to me that potentially when they design the, the, the health score, it's not from, it's not customer centric. It's internal. It's internal. It's all that you think about that. Mm 